Thank you for having me here. Um, I'd like to first say that uh, Crossref is very excited about our growing uh, Brazilian membership. Um, we are keenly interested in finding uh, ways to make the relationships uh, work smoother and easier for everyone. So um, we, uh, we appreciate your patience with uh, the, uh, our problem with the, a little bit of the language barrier. And um, we, we really look forward to continuing to work with, uh, with Sailo and, and the other Brazil, Brazilian publishers who are our members. So in, in the late 1990s, as scholarly publishing was moving rapidly online, the opportunities for new services quickly revealed that some technological benefits presented logistical challenges. Linking was and is the fundamental principle of the nature of being online. It is likely one of the first features publishers tried to build into their online content was the hyperlinking of bibliographic references. Certainly they found it straightforward implementing citation links to their other content, but linking to the content of the publishers, of other publishers was fraught with business as well as technical problems. From an implementation perspective, the techies needed to understand how to build a hyperlink to another publisher's site. This means they needed to know web server addresses for each partner site as well as the unique URL syntax that each publisher had in place to get a specific piece of content. Further, the business, the business folk needed terms and conditions between each linking partner, which meant sometimes uh, lengthy negotiations, setting up each bilateral agreement. Uh, hyperlinking bibliographies was about to become impossible. The solution was Crossref, which solved both of these problems. The technical solution was to use the DOI. This replaced the need to know unique server addresses with a single web address of a proxy, dx.doi.org. And further, since the DOI is based on indirection, the impact of changing URLs was eliminated. As a participating link partner needed to change their URL syntax, they also simply updated the indirection of their DOI and therefore other link partners did not have to make any changes. On the business side, Crossref developed a single terms and condition agreement which all members sign when joining. The agreement describes the uniform benefits each member receives as well as their obligations to the organization. Crossref was formed as a nonprofit membership association which has tax exempt status in the United States. We were founded to provide services that publishers are best achieved collaboratively or doing things that publishers cannot do on their own. With reference linking as the first and core service offered by Crossref, it is the only mandatory service that in which all members must participate. All members pay an annual membership fee that is based on their size as measured by revenue generated from publishing operations. In addition, there is a transaction fee for registering each DOI. Additional fees may be added as a surcharge on the annual fee or as a unique transaction fee for some of our optional services. Crossref members represent all types of publishers and since each member gets one vote in selecting members of our board, no one segment of the industry should have dominance over, the cross, over Crossref governance. While the majority of members are based in the U.S., many of them having international uh, presence, 84 percent of our members are, are categorized as small, uh, very small in, in many cases. Uh, and, but the majority of our revenue does come from half a dozen or so of our largest members. Most members uh, directly join Crossref, but to facilitate small publishers' participation, we have created the concept of a sponsored publisher and represented members. In these models, a larger organization performs all transactions with Crossref on behalf of their clientele. These arrangements have the benefit of centralizing fee management and technical transactions for small publishers who, who simply do not have the capacity or the desire to do these tasks. And, and we have been in, in discussions with IBIC uh, since April to try and get an arrangement set up where they can be the front agency uh, for, for many of the, the smaller Brazilian publishers that has has yet to come through. The paperwork is still, uh, unfortunately, uh, in, the, in, in the various ministries for approval. So as soon as that happens, um, the way that 
Brazilian publishers interact, or many Brazilian publishers interact with Crossref, will become much easier. So Crossref DOIs are fundamentally all about preventing broken links. Publishers use Crossref DOIs to link their content, usually from the references at the end of articles. Uh, users click on these, on these links, and they re are referred via the Crossref database to the uh, cited article at its correct location on the web. And uh, as I said earlier, uh, if the content moves, uh, the publisher only has to update the Crossref database once, and all publishers uh, that are linking their content using DOIs uh, will be redirected to the new location. Alongside the registration of DOIs and the capture of article metadata, the backbone of Crossref's core service is, uh, centers on the discovery of DOIs. Authors mostly follow very specific citation guidelines that dictate how an article is described in the bibliography. Since reference styles still follow rules uh, put in place when printed pages were concerned, uh, we have the need to translate from formatted citation to DOI. So Crossref's query service is built to perform this task in an automated uh, environment where one and only one result can be processed. Crossref uh, does not charge any fee or even require membership to perform qu query operations to look up DOIs. Uh, we believe there should be few barriers to encourage dissemination uh, and use of DOIs. So this is just a quick slide on what a DOI looks like. Um, it has the, uh, oops, that one's missing. Okay, well, I had a slide on what a DOI looks like, but it's pretty, I think everyone's pretty much familiar with, the, with, with that. Um, in, in March of uh, 2013, uh, we hit a high of 90 million clicks using DOIs. These were users, uh, real people. Um, in addition to uh, the, the 90 million, uh, there are about 20 to 40 million clicks a month that are actually caused by crawlers doing their work. So in aggregate, there's something around 100 million plus uh, DOI uh, Trend, uh, uh, people, things following DOIs, using DOIs to get the content. And you can see here that the chart over time is upward, all in the right direction. Okay, some slides are disappearing on me, but um, uh, so uh, just quickly, Crossref's content type. Um, I've got them here if you want to come up and look. The type of content for which Crossref uh, members are registering metadata is, is slowly changing. Uh, five years ago, it was 95% journals. Uh, now it's about 85% journals. We're, we're really um, pushing to get book content into the system now. Uh, a lot of new initiatives around books as well. So uh, hopefully uh, that kind of content will continue to grow. So. Uh, Crossref, I just want to mention, Crossref is not just about DOIs. Uh, DOIs are a tool, an important tool, and one that is a common denominator in most of what, what we do. But Crossref is mainly about providing services to the community which are built upon the metadata associated with DOIs. Uh, DOI registration is one of those services, and all of our services benefit from content having uh, standardized identifiers. Having gone over the core service, now I'll dive into a more recent initiative that is something else that needs widespread adoption in order to succeed. So in uh, 2011, Fred Dilla from the uh, AIP uh, brought forward a problem uh, whereby funding organizations were unable to easily track the research output generated as a result of their funding. In 2012, he, could, he reported back that we had a solution uh, emerging. So the problem basically is that uh, funding attribution usually is buried in the article text in no uniform way, if at all, uh, making it nearly impossible to harvest. So Fundref was proposed by Crossref members and has been developed in cooperation with several major funding bodies like the U.S. Department of Energy and the Wellcome Trust. The pilot phase concluded early 2013 and Fundref is now open to all members. Uh, there's no fee to members for participation in Fundref, and there is no fee to anyone who wishes to use the data. 
So as with most things, cross-ref uh, DOIs are used. Uh, article, the article, of course, has a DOI, uh, the article that has the funding uh, metadata in it. Uh, award numbers or um, funders are also assigned a, a, a DOI, and they are can identified in what we call the FundRef registry. Uh, award numbers are not yet assigned DOIs, but we hope that uh, to be a development soon when funding bodies have a chance to get comfortable with FundRef and come to understand the value of having a universal identifier for awards and grants. Okay, so the registry is a common taxonomy, uh, taxonomy for funding of funding body names compiled and maintained by Crossref. Uh, the goal is to have as much of FundRef metadata refer to this taxonomy, uh, but of course there is an other option so that authors and publishers can enter whatever funding organizations are appropriate for their publications. Uh, such non-registry names will not initially be given a DOI uh, but, and are not considered officially in the registry, but efforts will be made over time uh, to curate these names and add them to the registry. So this is the current FundRef uh, data flow. Under agreement with Elsevier, uh, Elsevier is performing the FundRef registry curation. Uh, they provide the data to Crossref, who then distributes it under an open CC license. So that is the registry of names made available in an RDF uh, format. During manuscript submission, authors are asked to provide funding information, hopefully using the taxonomy of names. Publishers then include funding data as part of the article's metadata they deposit with Crossref when they register the DOI uh, for the article. And finally, the public, including organizations, can, use, can, can query Crossref to identify content associated with specific funders uh, or awards and grants. Okay, so that's FundRef and uh, the, bit, the core linking service of Crossref. Now I'm gonna move on to a couple of, uh, of other things that we have. So cited by. While there are certainly sources that, other than Crossref, for cited by information, ours is a product of the member's own metadata. Consequently, of course, it is only as comprehensive as the data members put in. However, most of our large members are now participating, as well as many of smaller publishers. There is no fee to participate in Cited By, and the technical effort is minimal since the required data must be submitted as part of Crossref's core service. So this is an article which has been given to DOI. Uh, it's from the Journal of the Brazilian Society of Exotoxicology. Uh, they are a Crossref member. Uh, but they're not participating in, in Cited By. So if they were participating in Cited By, they would be able to find through Crossref that there are nine articles from seven other public journals that cite this article. Now, if you go to Google and you try to find the Cited By for this very same article, you will find that there are 20. Out of that 20, uh, there's, there's a few, four or five, that are dissertations. Uh, there's a couple that are two items in a repository that do not appear to be uh, copies of published articles. And then there are a number, about a half a dozen, which we don't have because our members are not participating in Cited By. So we just simply uh, do not have the membership fully participating enough to have our a data set complete with regard to site of buy. So th this is just a picture of what kind of service uh, members can offer to their readers based on site of buy. Um, this interlinking between journals and publishers, be it references or cited by, is the fundamental core benefit of being a Crossref member. So that's how many cited by relationships we currently have. Um, you heard yesterday that Thompson has uh, about a billion um, this comes from uh, only about a third of the deposited DOIs that, that have been sent into Crossref. So if everyone sent in the cited by information for all of their DOIs, uh, we'd have a billion as well. Lots of opportunity to grow. Okay, uh, just going to move quickly through a couple more things. Uh, Crosscheck, it's our originality screening. Uh, there is a fee to participate in this service. 
not plagiarism detection. It's similarity detection. The automated processing taking place within Crossmark cannot detect plagiarism. It can only look at written text and tell you where it matches other written text. It cannot tell you why the text matches. It takes a person with a certain amount of, ex of domain expertise to analyze the results and reach a conclusion as to whether plagiarism is taking place. Adoption has been slower than we would like. Uh, this graph shows uh, how many documents are being uh, checked on, through, through cross-check uh, over the last year. Uh, it's growing, and I think that uh, we've, we, we're getting close to calling it critical mass. Okay, so my little sign saying I'm done uh, is up. Uh, I'll just kind of quickly finish off here. Uh, Cross-check basically operates by you submit a document and you get a screen that tells you what the similarity looks like and the, the editor has to analyze that data and, and um, make a decision on, on what, uh, what is going on with that particular document that's been submitted. Okay. Um, just quickly, so uh, a, few, a bunch of slides are missing in there, and um, I guess that's okay since my time is up anyways. <laughs> um, but I w I'd like to leave you with one, with one particular slide, if I may. Um, hopefully it's there. So Crossmark works in PDF. Just going to quickly, this is the one I wanted to actually Thank you for having that slide there. Uh, this is our mission statement, and uh, just you know, uh, just like to make a comment about it. The main point I wish you to take away is that we strive to be a neutral contributor to the infrastructure necessary for scholarly communications. Uh, yes, we are owned and funded by our membership, who are publishers, uh, but we hope that uh, in addition to our members, that our that libraries, researchers, and advocates of all points of view uh, consider Crossref to be a trusted and worthwhile contributor in the industry. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Chuck Koshner. Most interesting.